Last time I was here at Portishead was to meet the crew on this particular lifeboat station and that was all part of the process of really trying to understand what makes them tick, get into the minds of the men and women who are responsible for, for crewing the boats but also running the organisation behind what we're so familiar with, the lifeboats. It was really the foundation of the design, that's, that's why I wanted to sort of pull all of those threads out. And also as part of my research I visited the All Weather Lifeboat Centre down in Poole, which is the r &I headquarters, to look at some of the technological advances, the, the boat building and the team that keep lifeboat stations like this running across the country. And what fascinated me amongst other things is, for instance, the curvature of the hulls. And you need to look out for some of those details which you'll find creeping their way into the design profile. So I'm back here in Portishead to reveal to a couple of crew members the nature of what I've been up to, bearing my soul, if you like, showing them the designs for Chelsea. Being able to, to walk into this arcade and pavilion and feel enclosed, feel secure, feel as though you're, you're a part of something, you belong in that space which again, for me, was something that came out very strongly from the conversations that we were having with the crew in here. What it should look like in a few weeks' time wow. is something like that. That certainly brings it all to life for me, that, that, that painting there. No, I love it. It's really restful and the colours. Yeah. It's just beautiful. The way that this is lit, and we can't see it on the illustrations here, but the fact that there is a beacon there, mm, which right. is that kind of constant source of light. That would hit the nail on the head for a lot of, a lot of people, to be able to see that beacon of light and that, that I'm going home. I'm here at one of the nurseries where we're growing the plant material for the show garden. And of course the design process, well that started months ago, but as far as the plant material is concerned, autumn is the point at which most of it really gets kick-started, especially things like the herbaceous plants and the smaller shrubs and perennials. And of course, we need a plentiful supply. We grow more than we need because we never quite know what the great British weather is going to throw at us. And also, we're looking for a very broad range to create a glorious garden. A key part of the RNLI garden for Chelsea Flower Show in 2022 is the structure. And that's why I'm here today, to look exactly at that structure, the technical details and the fabrication in the heart of Dorset with some specialist fabricators who revel in the opportunity of producing a building that is so special in its content. It's divided into two, the first part, the central part, is a Georgian structure which harks back to the days when the RNLI were first muted as a concept and the idea to move this organisation into a national body was really founded. The second part of that building or structure is an arcade, a much more contemporary, modernistic approach which splices through from one side of the garden to the other. The structures are composed of green oak and the green oak has been sustainably harvested from the new forest and it seemed to me to be perfectly fitting to use a material which in essence embodies everything about the organisation who are being represented in the structure. The next big step is the hard landscaping which sits underneath not just the structure but stretches out into the garden and beyond. Each of those elements of the structure give a different perspective on the garden itself and they reflect the history and the future of the RNLI. This is Witchford Pottery and Witchford are world-renowned producers, craftspeople, um, producing terracotta, urns and pots and they produce the most extraordinary, beautiful object. Today really is all about having that final check just a few weeks away from Chelsea opening. It's the final check 
of the urns and to make sure that everything is absolutely perfect. It's been a long process and a collaborative process, which is part of the enjoyment of working with people like Richford, is that it's, it becomes an amalgamation of ideas and inspiration. And so when I was looking for a piece, a sculptural piece, to represent the RNLI at the front end of the garden to counteract the loggia at the rear, then it was a natural choice to want to come and work with Richford. And we've commissioned them to produce two urns, which are the most beautiful things. Chris is very good at steering us towards the brief, that pattern of the wave, which the, the lifeboats create as they're going out at speed. They also actually quite like the hull under the water. But another one which he was very interested in is the idea of the, the history of the RNLI and the, the history of the sort of geology of the coastline. So, in fact, on the pedestal, we've got three different kinds of uh, impressed design. I am merely the man who just takes the design and makes it into reality. So I, I've been throwing the sort of parts of the, the column, the urn and the pedestal. So I've made them over at least two days. So I work down the line, so I make one and I'll make the next. And then I'll add one section, two, three, four sections and then go back to the third section, first, second, third pop and go down the line. And that's how you get a nice set, essentially. Because they're all being made at the same time and you're, you're, you're hopefully not being distracted from one to the other. But um, yeah, it's always a great feeling when you get something out of the kiln that you've worked really hard on and it comes out well. I've not got too much time left so yeah hopefully in the next few weeks we'll be home and dry. Well this is Lovell's quarry and as you can hear it's a work in progress but what is important for me about visiting a site like this is to get hands-on with the stone that we're using in all of its different guises. You see it in, in different lights, different finishes, and different personalities are revealed. The path itself starts very narrow at the front end of the garden, the, the visitor's view, if you like, and it broadens, but it broadens very informally. It's actually two opposing, very sinuous lines, which are just slightly out of kilter. And the alignment of that curve, that sinuous line on each side, is taken from footage of one of the lifeboats, which is launched down the slip. Hi, my name is James Hart. Uh, I'm one of the owners of Lovell Stone Group. Chris has commissioned us to fabricate various Purbeck stone elements for his garden, from the Purbeck paving through to the pitchers. The first process is for us to primary cut the stone into the thickness. The stone would then move on to its secondary soils, where we trim it to size, but slightly larger than the finished size that's been specified. The stone will then go into the tile factory, where it's calibrated, a finish is applied, and it's cut to the exact size as well. From there, the stone will then go into the tumbler. Now the tumbler is a way of us replicating 100 years of foot floor in about 10 minutes. So the, uh, the paving within the pavilion, we're applying a brush finish to it. However, there is a, a step, and to that step, we're going to hand finish the edge with a full ball nose. For me, one of the important things is, is, is to use a product which has integrity and to use a product which is also as sustainable as possible and to use a stone which is local and to use a UK sourced stone with all of the life and energy and vibrancy that that stone has seems entirely appropriate. It's going off to Chelsea but then ultimately it's going off to form a permanent piece of paving at a future lifeboat station. When we found out that we were going to be supplying the stone to the garden, we were very proud as a company because of the connections that a lot of the people working here have with the coast. We're back at Kelways, the plant nursery, who are growing the vast majority of our herbaceous plants and uh, some of the, the bulbs and some of the shrubs. 
This is just a few weeks out now. In fact, it's one week away from picking the final plants that make it through to the show. So this is a ruthless culling exercise. So all of the plants which we've selected way, way back, months ago, which we've been nurturing, tending, trying to primp and preen, trying to get them into a position where they'll arrive on site in good condition. This is the point where we decide, have they actually make it? Are they likely to make it? What's important is that we are predicting what happens in the next three weeks. So in one week's time from now, the lorries are being loaded. In two weeks time, we're planting the garden. In three weeks time, the garden opens to the Queen and the public. And therefore, we have to cast our mind ahead. It may not be looking brilliant now, but will it be centre stage in three weeks time? And we're looking to get that final list of candidates that will create the theatre. Every season, if you ask a gardener, they will say it's the most challenging season they've ever had. This is the most challenging season we've ever had, without a doubt. So we had no winter, there was no proper autumn. We haven't had that period of cold weather. And what's important about that period of cold, even if it's just a few days, a few weeks, is that it resets the plants. What's key for, for me and the team you know, that stand behind me, whether it's in the office, whether it's our partners in, in the production of materials or whether it's the, the guys and girls who are building on site with me, what's really important is that, you know, irrespective of what happens here and the way that the plants are performing, is that we, we produce a scheme that everyone can be proud of. You know, we're, we're here to celebrate the RNLI and to give the RNLI a foundation, a platform from which to, to reach out to a wider audience. So these kind of minor pressures about whether the plants are going to make it and, and whether deliveries are coming in and so on, it all adds to the overall weight of responsibility to do the organisation and everyone who, everyone who performs now and has performed in the past, everyone who's given their lives for the organisation, um, to do that justice. And that's, that's, that's some responsibility. One of the most important things when you're producing a project like this is to consider the sustainability of the project, the way in which you're moving materials around, sourcing materials, sourcing skills and talent. And it's been a real delight to, to find those individuals and those companies who are within a stone's throw of the base in pool of the RNLI and are all able to contribute with their local skills and services and of course local materials. Planting is the absolute key. And you know, I wouldn't do these sorts of things if I wasn't able to come and plant. And it's the bit, I get involved in the hard landscaping, but I'm very much just steering everyone else. But when it comes to the planting, it's very definitely you know, my hands on the ground because it's, there's something just fabulously exciting about dealing with the plant material. And you know, there's, a, there's a kind of an energy about the plants and they, they, they have a sort of, um, you can have a conversation with them which is really peculiar but there's a, there's a real sense that each plant has a personality like people and you just need to listen to that personality to know how it should sit with another and how you can build those communities which in a way is very similar to the RNLI you know it's a disparate band of people who all come together in a robust community and that's essentially what we're trying to create here. The real value of a garden like this is in the way in which the RNI can communicate their message and in the way in which it lives on in people's minds and photographs and media and in the, the way in which you're able to just, I suppose, create a link between the thousands of visitors that come through and the RNI volunteers and the crew members who are on the garden talking about their experience and forging those bonds. That's, what, that's the function of the garden.